We're here to answer your game, gaming or game night questions. Tonight we've got a topic, topic from one of our awesome Patreon patrons, Jeff Seuss. What tips do you have from when you and Dee first had kids and made sure to keep your gaming hobby alive? How did you make the time with infants and later with toddlers? Context. Many people are either habitual naysayers or have terrible children and tell other people their lives were over at birth. Give us some truth. All right. Thanks for the great comment, Jeff. Uh, I do apologize for taking this long to get to the topic, but we're here now. Now, I'm going to start by saying no. Just because you have kids, that doesn't mean your gaming life is over. But it will change, and it will take some work to keep it going. Now, what we can do for you tonight is to give you some of the tips based on what worked for the two of us. Now, for everyone but Jeff, well, I guess for Jeff's no, Jeff as well, is every family is different, and everyone's kids are different. Along with that, people have different gaming groups that may or may not be willing to go along with some of the stuff we're going to suggest tonight. We happen to have a good group of friends we game with that are very um, accommodating and, and willing to, to put up with things that, that others may not be willing to. Now, the other thing I do think is also important to note is that Deanna and I are both gamers, have been lifelong gamers. We met through gaming, as well as being parents. And I know this would also be the case for Jeff and Sheila. They do game together as well. But I also realize it's very common for gamers to be with non-gaming spouses. And that's a totally different situation, which is going to make things more difficult, as Sean well knows. Indeed, I gamed very little before I had kids, as my wife isn't a gamer but once we had kids more games started getting to the table as even if they were kids games they were still games well except for candyland they were activities where the kids <laughs> learned and you played together all right uh we're probably going to give deanna the mic most of the night she's got the best experiences here she's got everything down here so what we're going to do is i think start off with uh dealing with newborns Okay, well, you have to expect to put things on a pause for a little bit because newborns are a pain. They're time consuming. They're going to take up your whole life, right? And when someone in your gaming group has a new baby, you have to expect that they're going to go AWOL for a little while. Um, but once the baby's a month or two old, you might want to start making inquiries and see if there are ways you can accommodate them to help them start playing again. Um, some folks might want to jump back in and some might want to wait until their infants are a little older. So that's from the opposite perspective. That's if you have a, a gamer parent in your group. Right. Right. So if someone in your group has kids, don't expect things to go on as they have. There's there are obviously going to be some changes and please don't pressure them to come back. Make it their decision. Do not like realize that having a baby is a life changing event. It doesn't have to ruin your life, as some people are want to point out, but it is life changing. And your gaming group needs to be flexible. And we had one fellow in our group who was a single parent, and he would get a sitter just to come out and game with us, which was cool. But we had to expect that there were weeks when the sitter canceled, his kid was sick. Like, he missed a lot more than other people in our group, right? And we had to be ex able to um, be accepting of that, right? Um, you telling me I have to be loud enough made me lose my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. The and there's definitely there's definitely a lot of of interplay, right? The the key thing is the flexibility where you need to understand that everything's going to be in flux constantly. Yes. Uh, when it comes to jumping back into things, um, how that pregnancy played out is going to have a huge uh, impact on when you start again. Some mm -hmm. women are, are, you know, have a wonderful pregnancy and everything goes well and they come home from the hospital and three days later they're perky. And I'm sure mm -hmm. there's a, many women out there who want to kill them, but there's <laughs> also women who come home and struggle because new children are new and there are issues with postpartum depression and there are physical issues that, occur, that can occur during childbirth. That, you know, no one needs to go into all that, but how fast you can recover and be a human again after mm -hmm. uh, pregnancy is is variable enough, let alone how fast you're willing to come back to a group of people yes. uh, and, right. and interact with those people. And for guys, too, like it's an adjustment. Yeah. That's one thing I did want to point out. Please do not do the archaic thing that the guy doesn't have to be involved. And just because the wife had, just because your wife's pregnant, you had a kid doesn't mean you can't come out. Come on, Johnny, let's go out and play. That's that's a dated concept. The men have a huge role to play, especially in early development in childs. And again, expect that both 
parents, uh, it doesn't even necessarily be a man and a woman, both parents may have an adjustment period and may not be able to join back with your group right away. Yeah, that's just be fair. This goes for adopting too. You may yes. not have the physical impediments of giving birth, but in some ways that's even more life changing because if you're pregnant for nine months, you're mm -hmm. getting used to things. Whereas if you've adopted, it's a little bit more bang. There you go. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we were talking about when the one fellow in our group would get a babysitter and that's nice and all, but if I had a babysitter when my kids were babies, I didn't want to get together and go gaming. I wanted to go out on the town, like, cause it didn't happen that often. <laughs> so <laughs> for me, the way to keep gaming going was to have it in our house, you know, we have it on the home turf. So, um, I mean, when it comes to playing at public play events, sometimes it's not going to be possible for both parents to take part and you mm -hmm. can swap off and who gets to go to the friendly local game store and who stays home, right? And for me, most of the time I sent Mo off to play because I didn't care as much. I'm kind of a homebody and I'd, I'd rather be playing at home than at public events, right? So I'm like, eh. But I mean, you do whatever works for you and your partner and you... Yeah, and um, make, make sure you talk to each other and, and communicate and... Uh, you know, find out, make, you know, if one of you doesn't really care that much about going to the, the FLGS, that's fine. But don't assume that maybe because that person didn't previously want to go to the, go play the public play events all, they still don't. They might really want to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. They might <laughs> really need that break to be around adults yeah. for two hours a week that they might not otherwise be getting. So even if they aren't regularly that go to the uh, public play events gamers, they mm -hmm. might become one after, you know, big events just in order to, again, be with other adults, which can be a big thing sometimes yes. depending on, on your, your social situation as a new parent. One of the things to note though, obviously is uh, this is going to depend a lot on your support structure at home. If you have babysitters, if you have family that can watch the kids, unfortunately, I know there are a number of people out there that are, they're, Stuck is not the proper word. I don't want to say they're stuck with their kids, but they don't have someone else that can watch the kids. Yeah, we never so have. gaming at their place may be the only option. Yeah, we've never had we've never had sitters. We don't have family in the city that can yeah. babysit for us. So you play at the house with the ones with the kids or the youngest kids. I mean, that's a it's a not a bad rule of thumb. And um, I mean, when my kids were little, I didn't want to bring them somewhere else and then game because I wanted to be keep, I felt like I needed to be keeping an eye on them and then I can't do something immersive like gaming that's not fun that's just stressful right right so though with really young kids we used to play with uh, the daughter sitting on the table in her, her oh yeah bassinet when, or when she was in, like newborn infants are malleable little creatures that just want to be wherever you are so I mean even you were talking about Jeff about some children being really terrible. Like even our second daughter, she was miserable and colicky. But I remember wearing her in a baby sling and just pacing up and down um, in the basement while role playing because yeah. she wouldn't cry if I was walking with her. Right? I just couldn't set her down. <laughs> like, and in, um, one of the rules in our game group at the time was you're going to have to put up with the end of breastfeeding. Yeah, no, if, if you weren't just, comfortable with that, if you weren't comfortable with that, you weren't welcome. Yeah, because she's like, I, the kid's hungry, I'm going to feed it. So that, again, is up to your own personal comfort level. But again, that's where you need to talk to your group, right? You need to you need to communicate with them and make sure they're good with it. But that is a great way to keep gaming, especially with a toddler, right? Or sorry, a, an infant. An before infant, they, yeah. before, before they, the, when they're super needy, but in a different type of not mom, 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 mom needy. Yeah, when they're, when they're first born, most of the time, you keep them up against you and, you, yeah. you know, if, if you're lucky, they will sleep a lot. Some of them, not yep. so much. There's, there's, there's a wide variety, but, uh, yes. uh, I, you know, for us, our first one slept like a baby for, <laughs> for, yeah. for back of a better term all the time. Uh, and then our second was the one that, uh, that didn't sleep as much, but, yep. uh, we were really lucky with the first one and, uh, we could have done all the gaming we wanted at the time. And to be honest, I when it first started, I'm like, we're never gonna have to stop gaming. This is awesome. And then you hit a period where it did become an issue. Like when they when they were infants, it was working really well. We're like, wow, all right. And then they got a little older, and it, it's a little more titchy. It's 
it's I think the most important thing is you set up the expectations with your game group. I mean, if they know they're showing up at at your house and you're going to have an infant there and you're going to have a baby in the room with you or you're going to be taking breaks to take care of kids and they know it ahead of time, that's you know, it, it's like any gaming contract, right? Just setting yep. up expectations ahead of time and also setting up expectations between you and your partner so you're not breaking down and having an argument over whose turn it is to get the bottle in the middle of game night because that's no fun. Uh, the other thing too is um, I think normalize it. Like if you're going to be gaming with your kids, one of the things you need to do is normalize it at a young age. So like our kids grew up talking about the role-playing friends. The role-playing friends were people that came over once a week. The kids didn't know what a week was at that point, but nope. came over now and then. And they'd often be like at dinner, oh, the role-playing friends coming over tonight. So it was normalized. It was just part of their day-to-day that now and then mom and dad sat and played games. And um, at first, well, mostly they went to bed early enough. It wasn't a problem. But we'd set them up on the TV or they, they'd watch Zabumafu on DVD or whatever. We'd set up something for them to watch and we'd play. And sure enough, they'd interrupt now and then. But it was it was part of regular life. It wasn't a, it was never a big event. It was like, oh, we're gaming tonight. It was like, yeah, yeah, it's Monday night. The, the role-playing friends are coming over. Yes. And I mean, if we had wanted to play in the middle of the day, that might have been more problematic. Yeah. But we would do it later in the evenings. They'd um, Once they were like, you know, preschoolers, they'd be up for a couple hours. I would keep something exciting and rare that they didn't normally really get to do like a special tv show or something that they really wanted to watch and they're like our basement is set up that they're kind of in the same room with us but off to the side and they'd watch that and then we'd have to pause and one of us would take them upstairs to bed and then we come back downstairs and keep gaming and you know thankfully our group was accepting of that but yeah. again they knew you know i'm going to disappear for 20 minutes and take the kids upstairs and i'll be back right so yeah setting up the expectations again is 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 really important not only for the, the group but for the kids as well yeah. right you need to they need to understand that this is happening and what's happening and and maybe they know that they're getting something out of it right maybe they they're getting that show that they never get to see another time or they're getting to stay up a little bit later or something but you know they have to learn the expectations from a very early age as soon as they're able to start interacting about you know the difference between normal time when you can just come up and 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 grab mommy or daddy's arm and and demand something at any time versus when the people are over and you need to, you know, sort of stand back and, and wave if you need something and mm -hmm. wait to be acknowledged. Oh, and I will say um, when they were infants, like newborns and for, you know, for that first six months to a year area there, it was much easier to play role-playing games than it was to play board games. Cause a right. role-playing game, you can just come in and out of the narrative. If I need to walk out of the room, it's not a huge issue you know mm -hmm. as opposed to having to make everyone stop and wait for my turn so that i can you know move my meeple around is is another thing entirely right so all right we went a little off script so <laughs> i told you i just talk i know it's good i'm just trying <laughs> yeah. to figure out if i need to scroll the notes or not um <laughs> yeah let's see so again with the with the board game versus role-playing thing the other concern you always have to keep in mind is board games especially have adult hobby board games are not meant for children and toddlers no. uh, there's a reason why those age limits are on there and most of it has to do with all those really awesome shiny things that you can put in your mouth yes. um so again you know depending on the age and and you know if they're if they're sitting in their bassinet on the table next to you and you can rock the bassinet while you're playing great you can you can play with all the little tiny pieces you want but if they are you know in your arms and mm -hmm. have reaching ability you might mm -hmm. not want to be playing Gloomhaven where they can get their hands on yes. all sorts of fun little tokens and, and things. Speaking of which, here's a totally different, I'm not perspective on that, but something else to consider. You may need to rearrange your game room. This is something I personally had to do. I had to move all the miniatures up much higher. I had to move all the, mm -hmm. I have like potion bottles and like anyone who's seen my game room knows there's a bunch of stuff on the shelves. My, my game room is basically set up like a bunch of wizard shelves. Bladed things, yes. bayonets. They yes, bayonets. Storage. My kids still haven't seen those actually. Yes, <laughs> the bayonets. I, yes, I have a small collection of bayonets and I have like some knives and stuff because, you know, I used to go to Renaissance festivals and stuff. Uh, the bayonets actually World War One. But anyway, yeah, those all went away um, and haven't come back out. Everything got moved up, right? Like everything shifted upwards out of little toddler reach. And I've got to say, holy cow, have our kids been awesome with that the whole time. We have never had a problem with um, them like getting into my stuff. For a very long time, they weren't allowed in the basement by themselves. And they just yeah. knew that. 
right? And there was yeah, but uh, they didn't even sneak down there. Nope. Like I know me as a kid, I would have been playing I, all that and trying yes, to put it back exactly. in the exact same spot so Dad wouldn't notice. Yep. Um. Yeah. So I, I mean, some people really enjoy playing with their toddlers at the table. Personally, I didn't. Uh, that depends on your personal, you know, like I, I've seen a lot of people that take enjoyment of having their toddler at the table and having them maybe move the meat before them or roll some dice or whatever. Yeah. And depending on your kid's personality and patience level, that can work as a way to get some gaming in. It's just, I didn't find that to be fun. Um, I don't, I mean, and that's totally separate from sitting and playing games with your kids, which is fun. Um, and, you know, as they get older, there's lots of decent toddler and preschooler board games out there, which we have definitely covered on other. So, yes, I mean, we have lots of podcasts out there. Go to the blog, search children, kids game, any of those. We'll throw some links to a few of them in, uh, in the podcast show notes. Playing with toddlers, we've covered all of that before. I think that's it like my my biggest tips are that you need to be flexible you need to have an accommodating game group and that's about it yeah so part of it it's going to really depend on the kids right their their patience level their personality and the 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 um comfort level of your group right um one of the things you kind of skipped over earlier and kind of mentioned is you should be going to the parents house like don't insist someone come to your place if they're the ones with the parent because you probably don't have all the things that child might need on hand, whereas the parents would. And maybe you haven't moved everything three shelves up. And yes, I was going to say your house might not be as child safe and so yeah, on. Child, so child proofing have... is a, yes. a significant and time consuming uh, event, yes. <laughs> an ongoing uh, event. So yeah, so I would recommend like like offer it up. Like I like you should put that forth. If it's not you that's pregnant or, or had the, had the child offer to go to that person say hey you know what if you want to keep gaming how about we play at your house i'll keep the and i'll bring all my books whatever the case may be now if they say no 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 i'll still come over that's fine but then warn them right like hey my place might not be child safe and you know i've got a really expensive game table and i wouldn't be happy if your kid puked on it like like i, I realize it's not easy to say but it's kind of true right like this is not a cheap hobby when we're talking hobby board games we're not talking about ruining a ten dollar copy of monopoly if if a kid throws up on it or gets poop everywhere or whatever right and so that is something that should consider it should be considered and as a parent realize this right because you do like dana used to call it mommy brain sometimes you're not you're not quite thinking yeah. straight oh definitely you get you don't sleep for you know a couple of years you get a little foggy <laughs> so so don't also don't expect as a parent for people to accommodate you just because you have a kid doesn't mean people should bend over because you have a kid. Yes, our society in general, we treat especially young parents and, and parents with young children a little differently, but there's no preset rule that your game group has to let you bring your kid or something like that. Again, that's all that expectation. Talk about it. There, there should be a, a session zero, I guess, for, for your group, right? Get together and say, hey, we're going to have a kid. It's they're coming around this time. We're probably going to be off a couple weeks. We would like to keep gaming if we can. Here's some ways we thought to do that. It, what do you think? It evolved. Like, I didn't know that I was just going to be like, I'm breastfeeding. You all can deal with it. I didn't know that was going to happen until I was in the hospital. And like everyone, including the janitor, is walking into your room. And I'm like, all right, apparently I just got to get over this. So, I mean, it, it, it evolved, right? Like, and we didn't know what it was going to be like. Being a new parent is, yeah. it's, you know, you're diving in. And by the time we got to the second kid, it was like, here, keep your sister busy. Go watch TV. We're, we're gaming. You know? well, you do, not at you, first. Yeah, Actually, not this, at first. You talk, the second pregnancy was rough. Yes, I didn't, for I you, you were for out a for a long time. Yeah. Yes. So then the other thing you can do, too, is once your kids start getting older, is they you can game with them, right? So we mentioned lots of different toddler games. So one of the great compromises is, for one, if your game group's cool with it, play with everyone, right? Like, get them to the table. Not every week. Point out that this is special. We're not going to do this every Monday. But you know what? Tonight, you get to play with the role-playing friends. And, like, we did that on, like, birthdays and New Year's and mm -hmm, stuff like yeah. that. But that's great. But, again, get your group's permission. Don't just show up to, you know, Twilight Imperium. You got a 12-hour game night planned with a toddler. Don't do that to your, your friends. <laughs> okay it ahead of time. Um but the other thing you can do is uh, the, the, the kid compromise, right? The Well, tonight, mom and dad are going to be playing with role-playing friends, but how about tomorrow we'll sit down and we'll play Laundry Jumbo or whatever toddler game your kids are into, or we'll play Candyland, right? So you get that, that reward, or even better, if you can do it in the same day, 
right? Because then you get the game table and everything set up and clean and you play with the kids. And then when the kids show, head off the bed, the gamers can come in and start playing. Yeah. And that, that works really well for us on, a, yeah. on events like New Year's and stuff, because we'd only do it a couple times a year, right? So, yeah. Now, the other thing we've recommended to is play with the play in the evenings, right? My, most kids have fairly young bedtimes. Our, our little little ones had 730 at the time. So we didn't start gaming till eight. And thankfully, it wasn't that disruptive, everyone showing up, because I was worried about that at first that, you know, the kids wouldn't get to sleep because they keep hearing people coming. Mm -hmm. Well, they got used to it. Right? But they, they got knew used to people it. Again, were coming over, you know, kids, kids are it really wasn't, good. Who's at the door? Is Santa here? Yeah. <laughs> kids are really good at getting used to things. That's one thing yeah. that a lot of people don't understand is kids become accustomed to what is going on around them. So mm -hmm. if you game with, game at the house all the time, kids just accept that as normal. Uh, they will start asking their friends why, you know, when their when their parents gaming friends are going to come over because they accept that as normal. Uh, one thing to mention, though, is about the play in the evenings. Uh, while many kids and I think most parents will hope that their kids do the nighttime sleeping thing. That's not always the case. Yes. Some kids do have some pretty messed up sleep schedules and it takes time and a lot of effort to get those switched around sometimes. So make sure you're aware of what that the parent involved sleep children's sleep schedule is. Yes. Don't just assume that, oh, you've got a newborn. Well, they're going to go to bed and stay and you know, sleep for 12 hours. I, I was more thinking at toddler level at this yeah. point. When they were toddlers, we were playing downstairs with a baby monitor. And I sometimes we'd have to, one of us would have to run upstairs. Uh, as they got older, we'd have kids just popping up downstairs and I, I would like literally beg them I'm like you just have to be clothed because they're like sleeping on Trichinu I'm like please the role-playing friends are over just put clothes on before you come downstairs um you know they come downstairs we'd hear terrible noises uh whatever we'd have to pause the game right so I'm um, again our group was very accommodating for that yeah. so it worked so I think overall set expectations all around um, between the partners, the parents, who, whose turn is it to do what and who's going to take one of the, the monitor goes off, who goes and takes care of it, let the group know what's going to happen, let the kids know, don't include the children in this, right, let, let them know what's coming, like even very small children can grasp a lot of these concepts. Yep. And even if they may not seem like they understand you. Um, the other thing that will help is keeping it regular. Um, game night shouldn't be a surprise. Like people just showing up at the house is going to be way more disturbing as then everyone comes over on eight o'clock on a Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So regular scheduling, but that also goes with trying to maintain your game group. And it's another one of our big suggestions to not have your game group fall apart is to try to get together and do something every week. And that's another thing is once you have kids involved, things will go wrong be prepared to maybe just chill and hang out and watch the kids play video games and have some coffees because it's just not going to work that night. Like or sometimes I had to say, you guys go ahead. I give up. I'm just going to be upstairs because yeah. this is not working. So it, it be accommodating on both sides, whether you're the parent or the game group. Yeah. And if you're, if you are doing an RP, a GS in, in particular, Make sure that you're not you've you've got um, allowances built in, right? If if mm -hmm. if a if one of the parents is going to have to step away for the night because their kid has is colicky or just you know some can't can't settle down, don't penalize that player because of mm -hmm. having to miss out. You know, there make make allowances for that and know that you're going to need to make allowances sometimes. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't be penalizing them because one they're being penalized by not being there with the group and playing mm -hmm. uh don't add you know insult to injury so the chat i see has been asking a lot for for older kids and toddlers and what to do with interruptions and again i think it's it's mostly set the expectations but as the kids get older include them more whether that's help have them help you clean up for game night and sweep the floor and then play a game with them before people show up um involve them in games if possible right like set it up so that like my kids are old enough to run RPGs. If, if our Monday night green group was going, I would love Gwen to run a game of uh, Tales of Equestria for everyone one week or something, right? Like as they, they can now stay up as late as we play, uh, not on a regular night, but like on a weekend or something like that. Um, but our kids are now 11 and 13. Yeah, so they're not toddlers. Toddlers different. is different, yeah. Um, like I said, try to involve them more. Um, distraction is a big thing, like, like Deanna had mentioned. Have some kind of reward for it. Make sure it's regular by the time their toddlers are starting to get 
understand rhythms better in weeks and when it's a weekend and when it's busy time and when they should be quiet and when they shouldn't. Um, but you're going to have to deal with tantrums. Like uh, both our kids went through a period where they just didn't stop. Both. It happens. And, and you know what? If you have to cancel gaming for a few weeks, well, while, while the kids um, what is stretch their freedoms, I think <laughs> is a uh, try 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 to gain control over their own lives in whatever way they can. I think is that's that's what they're actually doing at that age is what is trying to uh, set boundaries and expectations while they're going through that stage, which will happen. You might not be gaming for that little while, or maybe that's the perfect time where it's okay. You get a week off, I get a week off, and we're going to go game at Mike's place where there are no kids. Just send them to live at my mom's for yeah, two weeks. Send them to my my or the grandparents, the other, right? The other thing to watch out for: we talked about distractions, and you know, you know, having something special for gaming night. Uh, make sure you don't go too special. If you set their expectations too high, they're going to expect that. Um, yeah. And so you don't want to necessarily have to be going out and buying a brand new. Oh, deck goodness, of Pokemon no. cards every week just yeah. so that you can yeah. play the game or something. You know, My it can just, just be t screen time. Yeah, they didn't have a lot of screen time. So they were pretty, like now in the pandemic, it's gotten a little lot of hand, but they didn't used to get a lot of screen time. So they were pretty happy. It was like novel to be able to come downstairs and watch TV and kind of listen in on what we were doing. Yeah, you know, like the whole thing, right? They were excited about it. So, which is something I also feel to mention, I should mention though, we didn't care. Um, you might want to warn your group to uh, change their vocabulary, their language, and what happens in the games based on the kids being around. Now, us with our kids, I didn't worry about it. We never have. Uh, we've sworn around the kids since <laughs> D. As, as I'm still shocked. We've gone almost a full episode here without any swearing. I've um, been very good. <laughs> she's been very good. Um, and you know what? Our kids don't swear at all. Like, so it's not like we taught them bad habits or whatever. We it's just something. I think I first read that Kevin Smith did that, and I was like, you know what? It's language. Like, like it's it's ways to express certain emotions that are difficult to express otherwise, and whatever. And we went with it, but that might not certain be for everyone. Topic matters would not yes, be appropriate in front of my kids, and I would probably put a kibosh on it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, X card, Infants X card can care. matter for X card I've can be used for lots loud. of things. Yes. all sorts of curious content to my daughters when they were very young infants just want to hear voices so yes. that doesn't matter at that point but yeah once once they get the school age and so on once once they're paying more attention plus realize they are paying attention uh it's it's shocking stuff you hear about a month later or whatever now and then but like we were playing fantasy games like uh, we were playing warhammer uh but it was you know it was pure fantasy it was dwarves fighting goblins and and dwarves being silly and drunken and yeah. and it, it was we were we were not playing any heavy bleed games uh, while we had the kids around. No. Uh, I, I see. Uh, D &D, actually, people talking about uh, once the kids get are getting are getting to that older age, the kids get involved in things. You've got yes. soccer and t ball and karate and uh, scouts and all these little things, and that can become uh, something as well. And again, that comes back to flexibility and. Mm -hmm. Usually, parents are going to try and find one day of the week where they don't have to have their kids yes. at all the different places. Uh, and maybe that also becomes the gaming uh, day, you know. But again, we're going to stay at home. We're not going to bring our kids anywhere. So you guys come here and play a game. It mm -hmm. can be a great solution to that because those parents want interaction that isn't with all the other parents in the, you know, waiting room at karate or whatever it might yes. be. Yeah, kids' events may be a chance for you to game, but I know most parents like to hang around for like like longer events, sporting events, or whatever. Yeah. Personally, I'm thinking if I if I got to drop my kids off at T ball, I would drop them off and be like, "Hey, we got two and a half hours. Let's get into some gaming." <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's it for our discussion on continuing to game once you have kids.